How's it going, folks? I'm Marcus. And I'm Rami. And this is the podcast where we try and figure out what this podcast is about. And figure out what we're doing with our lives. This week, we're going to be talking about Jeff Bezos' six-pack body. And we're going to be joined <laughs> by my very, very good friend and complete design guru, Mr. John Eze. Hope you enjoy the episode. How's your week going? <gasps> Mate, about a thousand times better than last week. Still really? can't shake this effing cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last week was a horrendous false start. Yeah. It was the you thought, first you, you thought week you had back at work. Right? We, the whole house was down in COVID. You were, yeah. you were living in la-la land telling me it's never going to get anywhere near you. <laughs> I was sick as a dog. The kiddo was off school. It was just a yeah. thing. Yeah. And it was started work and I was not there this week. We are substantially we had Freedom Day earlier in the week. Just a little little private day that we celebrate when we can get out of quarantine. You know, that sort of thing. What's freedom, freedom is day. that a, is that a work thing though, or is that is no, that a no, no that's no, just it's a just, you it's just a Caro and I thing. Nice. Can walk outside and see other people. Uh-huh. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanna just wanna just cast our mind back to last week when you said no one's going to get it. Everyone's going to dodge it. So you're you, fine. And it was only my special situation. Just like, just catch us up on that, Marcus. So, it? well, one of the nice things about being the editor on the podcast means that you can edit out anything that if anyone says something stupid, usually when you say it, I'll keep it in. But if there's something anybody else, <laughs> anybody else on the podcast could be Who knows? Anyone, Who knows it could be? I'll yeah. usually clip that out. Uh, uh-huh. So that didn't make it in last week when I predicted that what? coronavirus would not be as uh, rampant. So <laughs> thanks for bringing it back up today. You look. Mate, a lot, we have a big episode. You look big a lot better. Often. We do have a big episode this week. We got a real person on. Uh, are you a special guest? An actual guest who is competent in the things that they do. I think <laughs> I do feel like we're wholly unprepared for this as always. Yeah. Twelve minutes ago, I did look up some stuff on design so that we'd be able to ask him some <laughs> deep questions. I feel like we want to, if it's one thing about John, so, you know, I've met John before, a bit of background. Uh, John is one of Rami's mates, um, met him when at your wedding. Great guy. I feel like we want to ambush him. Like, I think he, he <laughs> yes. you know, he's been kind of sending texts, kind of, he's, you know, he's, he's up for it. And I feel like we want this to be an aggressive onslaught where he's really ter- for the first, just for the first 25 minutes of the 30 minute episode. I feel like if we... <laughs> <laughs> he'll respond really well to that i think his character yeah and the nature of of his like ocd i think will be really that'll bring it on really nicely yeah that'll be yeah. great yeah you, bombarding i can't believe you sent him our first podcast where we say that we'll bring on guests and be passive aggressive to them and he's like yeah 100 percent, sounds great <laughs> so, okay i, I don't so, think you watched it like beyond the first three minutes of the episode so today he forwarded me that bit which goes Oh, make the guests do all the work. And I was like, <laughs> this is the problem with learning in public, Marcus. You can't be no, sharing with your guests sh- the show strategy. Show your work. Show your yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've even, um, got, we've even got someone lined up for next week. This is, this is starting uh, to line up, Remy, you know? That's, that's the bit that I was like, wait a minute. We're planning yeah. one more. It's like a calendar. No, it's, it's like you're I think, think we've got to get two ahead. And, yeah, and okay. the, the themes are, are yeah, we got, it's, it's happening. Whatever it's we talked together. about last week, that's the key. What yeah. I like is that we have some recurring, mm-hmm. l- like, staple themes that we need to do, almost like standard spots in the agenda that we need to hit. We need to hit yeah. the Coronas. Yeah. We need to hit the NFTs, obviously, the I Red think, 3s. I'm wondering, will we be able to avoid it today? Do you think we're going to be no, able to get... No. no, no, I'm going to bring it up right now. No, no, we can't, we can't avoid it right now. For a start, like, the level of radicalization that I think Twitter has... Yeah had on you i believe that you have been radicalized by twitter oh yeah big time uh what uh, it's a it's a short you know i went my entire view of the world through twitter which is the first thing i look at in the morning and the last thing i I look at at night is nfts my belief is that that's all anybody talks about that's it and even if uh, even if a world events happens beyond cryptos it's always the impact of that world event on crypto is what i get in my news feed you know like you know building collapses and kills three people who would have bought a or somebody who owns a crypto punk <laughs> killed in building collapse and i'm like that's terrible the market the mar- how's, the, how's, the, how's the market gonna respond he checks his wallet i feel like you're a living example of t- two things the like amazing obsessive yeah. And like by your own admission, like yeah. that personality that makes you who you are and makes you successful as you are and whatever you dig into, combined with the bubbles and the, like the following and the filter and the radicalization, it is a perfect like 
Textbook but I'm example. at least at least I'm I mean I don't own any NFTs. I'm not Yet. investing any of that stuff, and I'm not. Go, I don't plan to. Uh, you know, beyond cryptocurrencies, a small bit, things like that. I, you know, I do obsess about these things. I get interested in something and then I just read everything yeah. that is to be read yeah. about it. Yeah. And yeah. I, there's like a two week window. I'm, I know myself enough now that there's like a two week window where I learn everything about it till the point where I kind of understand it and then I can dismiss yeah. it. You, 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 know, you so. remind me of my other very, very good friend, Bino, who you also met in my wedding yeah. friends with. Yeah, he used guy. to have the same thing, but not with like topics, but with people and friends. Oh yeah. You just like get onto a new friend who's a friend of ours and just absolutely be all over them, going hard and see them every day and they do all this stuff and he yeah. knows I said this about him. And then he'll have some fight and all of a sudden it'll be he's just hard in, hard out. Mm -hmm. Right? He's yeah. like, if there's something here, like, I want to find out. Oh, he's not friends with me anymore. Yeah. Genuinely like, he'll just cut him. He'll be like and I'm like, mate, you've got to go easy and just like lower the expectations. It'll be fine. Like just use them for you know. Enjoy yeah. them for what they are and then yeah. pull back instead of yeah. Yeah, hard. With our guests coming on, let's get ourselves primed for Jan being here. Tell, tell me what you think the theme of this episode is. Future of design. So let me tell you a bit about John. John yeah. is the greatest designer, kind of user-centered experience builder. And I'd say like product strategist, mm -hmm. not in like the grand, you know, how we're building business models necessarily, but just gets it. Yeah. He has his finger and literally his thumb on the zeitgeist. Yeah. Right. He's yeah. all over this stuff. And when I used to work with him, we worked really, really closely. And just seeing how he works like intuitively, mm -hmm. um, I, I think it would be great to just get his sense of where it's at right now. And like he's a pop culture guru. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, you just jam on. Okay, right? great. Yeah. 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 Other than design, can I just just the yeah. thing that got me riled up this week more yeah. than anything else? Tell me. Like anything else. Tell me. And it's entirely your fault. <laughs> I was filled with rage, seething I love for it. 20 to 30 minutes as I'm trying to put this kid's toy back into the case. Oh, yeah. Because the bloody thing would not fit. And I'm like cursing at you. I'm internal. <laughs> and I've sent you the picture and I'm like, this is your fault, mother. 30 minutes, I couldn't. I obsessed about getting this bloody car And you had to get a YouTube into, video up and everything to I do it, right? I Googled, I yeah. YouTube, found nothing. And yeah. the most frustrating cherry on this cake, Kara walks in, 20 seconds. Oh, yeah, you just daisy chain and you twist and you get the three things in. You're done. Like, Hundred percent. That's ex that is literally so. Four years engineering school, ten years working in construction, <laughs> tried to put that thing back together to the point where I was about to throw it out the window, and Kelly was like, "Have you tried doing this?" And she just kind of clipped the three pieces, and I was like, "No, <laughs> obviously not." But the oh, next the man. next time I opened it, I was having none of it. I just threw the yeah. box away, and it's now. I bought a big tub, and it's now we just throw everything. I'm like, "There's no way I'm dealing with my own." Uh, my own incompetence every time <laughs> she plays with this. Part. This present you got me like two years ago, wasn't quite ready for it, whatever <laughs> it is. She loved it now. We were in quarantine and like completely out of the blue, I send you a photo of it going, this is hell. And within a second you respond and it's a picture of that box sitting at the end of your foot in the lounge room going, this is my solution. <laughs> like, it's just, I the, was like, yeah, we can sacrifice these four The pieces. second time you're going to be annoyed with me is when you have her in ER because both of my kids have taken that car because the wheel turns and there's little gears in it and they just go, and you have to shave a little small ball spot in her head. So twice with was a faster learner, so she's only done it once. Uh, so that's the I'm ready for that text message when you're in when you're down there being like, so we've just caught a mohawk in. Thanks for that present you gave us. It's the gift that keeps on giving. That is sealed the fate of that particular box. <laughs> Straight to the bin. What a poison chalice. Are there any other... Because you're a couple of years ahead of me. Are there any other presents or children's toys I should be so on the lookout for? The, the, here's what... Actually, people don't realize how important... How much you can tell about a person when they give you a, a gift for your kids specifically. Oh. So when people don't have kids and they give you a gift for your kid, it's a pass. They give you stuff. It's noisy. It's made of plastic. It's the type of stuff that there's no off switch. You're kind of like, okay, this no is volume. a terrible toy. It's going to ruin my life for yeah. two weeks until I can throw it out. But when someone who has kids gives you one of those, it's just just a clear indicator that they don't like you. Like they it's the you. clear. It, I mean, it's <laughs> they want out. It is literally like getting a, a, a bullet in the mail. That's but you're just like, okay, I, I really thought we were close. But you're after <laughs> buying this dinosaur that has no off switch that every time you touch a button screams. You're like, okay, great. I, I don't not sure what I did to you, but oh, obviously man. you feel I deserve this. You have kids. You know how shit that is. 
and you gave it to me. So, okay, I'm, I'll move on. And a bit like Bino, I <laughs> guess I'll have clear. to find another friend. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an Olaf in Cleo's room right now that is exactly this. Unoff- it's basically anything by VTech. Is yeah. also just that needs to go. You it's- you're a big offender. Some of the things I hate the most in our house <laughs> have come from Rami and Caro in the nicest way. All of them so far have been pre kids for you. If but you know I'm just I'm, you know I read a lot into the gifts. Not you know in I'm, terms of I'm just yeah. glad we got a chance to chat about this night before John gets on because that, we, that yeah. we were able to really get it yeah, out. Yeah, we cleared the air. Can I, I have a quick question? You cleaned your garage this weekend. You oh. clearly said we've got a guest on. Let's let's take this seriously. And yes, you tell me about the decorate. Tell me about the placement of the lawn leaf blower. The cactus still stayed, thankfully, and the four books that you have. And you tell me, tell me about, um, tell me about the thought process there when you took super everything deliberate. out of the garage and then you put them all back super, in again. Super, well, this is this is aesthetic. You wouldn't yeah. understand it, but design. The new generation We're going to talk about, about it with John. Aesthetic. Yep. There are many very very relevant things. None more than what I'm about to bring from off screen. But most importantly is there's the Power Broker book, which I've never read, obviously. It was given as like a first edition by someone who believes. And apparently during the pandemic, this became on Room Rater one of the big things where the Power Broker book was on like on the shelf of every journalist ah. and every politician. It became like a meme. It's a, it's thing. a thing. Okay. So it's like that's an it. Easter egg there, right? Okay. Little Easter egg. That's exactly what it is. Boom. The, the leaf blow? No, I just forgot it was there and just made a new shot. Sorry about that. <laughs> Rami, can you can you give us a bit of an intro on John and and uh, you know say nice things and and we'll start the start the interview. Uh, so it is my sincerest and absolute pleasure to introduce a very good mate of mine and one of the most distinguished designers I've ever had the pleasure of working with, Dr. John Eze. Obviously, uh, John's a very 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 good friend of mine who who's uh, agreed humbly to join us on this ramshackle uh, channel that is our so podcast. Great. John's an incredible designer. He's had an amazing career working places like LinkedIn and Google Search, where I met him and worked together for quite some time. He's currently a YouTube lead for design for YouTube Sports, and I'm sure he can tell us all about that. But most importantly, most notably about John, is he he's OCD. I'd describe him as OCD. If you ever go to his workspace, his desk, or anything in between, <laughs> the degree to which things are aligned and non-misaligned, and if ever should they not meet, it is just oh, something that can get under. If you want to get under some John's skin. I feel like fantastic. that's reassuring. Uh, you know, As a designer. I, yeah, I, want, I yeah. kind of want my leading app designers to be, to be super... Tidy. Uh, yeah, super ainly retentive about how their desk setup is, right? I think it's a good sign, you know? There's two sides. Like, I live with a creative. Uh, John, my wife's an artist. And uh, she has a room... It's kind of a room. It's one of those kind of also possibly a um, you know a kind of a, an earthquake site type thing where you go in. There's no surfaces. In. You literally can't put anything on any surface. There's books Perfect. everywhere. There's paintings everywhere. But she pulls. You know, she's able to be creative in that space. And I feel like that's one style of creative. But I don't know. I think I think I the it. clean app it. designer. Yeah. You know, like well, before we get into it, I have to clear up a few things because the the internet is forever. I'm not a doctor. Thank you, Romy. I don't want to get flamed by those who um, who put in who put in the real work, right? And then um, about my desk, there was only really one person to ever mess with my desk. Just say, like, <laughs> I'm not gonna point any fingers, but it's one of the three of us. And right? they and you know they don't work there anymore. So I would that's say right. you know <laughs> uh, let's just say I'm not gonna say why, say, but it may hmm, have had who knows to why, but that too. person no longer works there. So yeah. <laughs> If he wasn't going to turn up to meetings on time, I had to get his attention somehow. That's, right. That's, all That's I'm saying. exactly right. Well, let me say this. Gentlemen, thank you so much for welcoming me. I love the concept of this podcast. I love the title. I hope that we'll make progress as we progress. <laughs> You're already so generous, John, that you think we have a concept. The fact right? that like, you- <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think pretending to figure things out through the episodes makes a lot of sense. If next season you want to change the title to We're Almost There, I think that would work that too. That could be season two. That could be season He's, he's already franchised us for I a second it. season. We've made it. I don't want to take over. I just have ideas. He's got- <laughs> I'm, I'm here to be additive. Wait, is figuring things out first? Figuring things out with Rame and Marcus? But Marcus <laughs> names things first. Right? Like, I, right. I just we appreciate had- you showed up, John. How did you, guys, how did you guys figure that one out? Who's oh. Name? How, we did actually have the conversation. I was all Remy and Marcus, and Remy is tired of hearing the word Remy. So he's like, "Oh, starting with Remy is very like Remy. Let's Classic. do Marcus and Remy. It's like brilliant. 
<laughs> it it really came about because I had put you know a ton of work into this and tried to plan it and created Google Doc and Rami did fuck all and then we just we kind of recorded that's our first awesome. episode and then that's now we're on episode this three. Is, this so. is one of the bits that will remain in the podcast. I think you'll find. <laughs> oh my god! I cannot wait to see how, how this is going. To <laughs> Why don't uh, in theme with um, what do you want to talk about today, John? What are some of the things that when, when Rami said to you, we want to talk about the future of design, what are some of the things that kind of fired in your head as being the future of design? The future of design? Wow. Obviously, in the future, we won't even be here. We'll be in the metaverse, for sure. And I'll just create an avatar that looks exactly like me, doing exactly what I do in a virtual world. But before we actually get to that, though, we have to talk about the biggest story today, right? And that's the fact that the internet no longer allows copycats. Right, and so if you if you are familiar with the Wordle game, right? Anybody, anybody see this story? No. There's an app on the App Store. It's a really awesome word game, but it's Wordle. A copy. Oh, Wordle. Wordle. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We're all addicted. We're all addicted. A, Ram, Rami only copy. found out yesterday that everyone has the same word when he ruined yeah. it for me. But and yeah. since <laughs> and since then, I've been using that word in meetings, just dropping it as much as possible of the day. Oh, and people sweet. who play it ping me, go you won't playing Wordle and people who don't play it later. Yeah. Yeah. The thing that I find absolutely fascinating is for the first time in a long time, the internet will not put up with copycats. And so the app that's on the app store is totally getting flame. The creator of this copycat had to apologize publicly and has been delisted from the app store. Oh, is he really? Day. Absolutely. And he made oh. a crap. And like, what's like absolutely bizarre here is the web version completely free. It's a project of the heart, you know, a passion project. And this gentleman made an app and started charging annually for it oh. with trials and did gangbusters. And nobody knew the difference until he got caught, right? And so here we are. There's no tolerance for copycats in a world where everything is a copy, right? Well, oh, this is amazing. That's, that's really interesting. So one of the things that I, you know, we've talked about on here is content creation and TikTok. And one of the things that makes TikTok so... Uh, I feel like that the, the teenagers today don't actually respect IP in the same way that we kind of did growing up. We learned the hard way through Napster that you can't steal music. Metallica will probably sue you. Like we learned, we, you know, all of those things about music are owned by people. Videos are owned by people. If you're creating a video, yeah. you shouldn't put a snippet of it's another video in. calling it IP, not we my keep, stuff. My, <laughs> it, right. But, but I thought that that generation, the way that TikTok is set up where you can screen, you know, you do reaction videos, you screen grab mm -hmm. things, you do voiceovers and, or, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's really encouraged the kind of, Remix. It, it doesn't really matter who did it first. It's about who does it best. That's and, right. and I'm surprised, you know, I'm kind of, I kind of thought that's the way we were all going. Excellent. No, but, but the way TikTok has set it up is really brilliant, right? Because they bought all music rights. So, I mean, it's now the largest music discovery platform there is Period. the entire music industry is pivoted entirely into tiktok huh. something like nine out of the last the 12 biggest hits of 2021 were all tiktok based so they've got all the music license which is the key genius of it and anything that's ugc created basically p builds on itself so it's not ip anyway it's all themes and games they've worked out how to make the remixing story work like writ large and kind of infinite loops Absolutely. it's it's not it's not really ip P, right? The IP that's important is covered. And so you everything think the, else the is licensing designed. is done and then the because the end user has no idea they're they're basically the borrowing that happens by the end user, but it's all covered under licensing. I get yeah. you. Okay. The, 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 the time that does get pulled out, very similar, I think, to the word game was where like Renegade happened. And it was <laughs> like one small you know, it was it was it was a dance that was invented by one particular TikToker and or Tucker. And then one of the kind of more mainstream talkers did it and didn't give any credit. Where it, so I think when it takes yeah. off and when it's big enough, uh -huh. there, there is a bit of community pressure. There is a bit okay. of originality to kind of hang on a minute. And then the original Renegade creator got taken to all the talk shows to do it properly. Yeah, I, I think there is still a bit of uh, there's a bit of honor amongst these. Yeah, <laughs> honor, honor on the internet. Let's go but, with that. But John, you literally like I just saw that word game story last night, and I saw him like people roasting him for the for his Reddit, yeah. and like he was bragging about how he managed yeah. to like find a loophole oh, and he nailed it all my annual subs and I'm like yeah 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 okay and, let's go <laughs> and he got like four letter words and six letter words and that was his innovation and the whole thing okay. but you're saying overnight it's now he's had to recant and oh he's been cancelled instantly oh right? that's like, amazing he's been cancelled delisted done and done 
we'll never see it again unless the original creator decides on, to have on that. what grounds like what grounds is the app store does apple go hang on a minute you've taken a concept like by his own like he, he makes a good point it was on some tv show where they had this game anyway back in the 80s or 90s oh what right like he's kind of like yeah the concept was over here and then he points to a tv to tv show yeah. so by what grounds is was it like, called wordle on the tv show no it was called what was it called on the tv show it was, it was a it was a jimbo tv show jingo it's a good point. So, like, but they, they didn't have the trademark, and he makes that point. It wasn't trademarked at all by whatever UK agency did it. Yeah, but it's well, still stealing. The grounds are: is it you made the internet it? angry, and you're yeah, not allowed yeah. to make the mass <laughs> yeah, angry. The mob, you raised the mob. <laughs> like, that's exactly what it was. They got to keep the people happy. Yeah, right? like, that's it. When they're unhappy, Apple has to take action. All right, like hands down. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. What can you do? That note about TikTok, though, I thought was interesting. Uh, another great side of that is that it's also created superstars two things one is like it makes people overnight faster than any other platform before it but it's no different to youtube or vine or anything that came before it always made like you know anyone kind of infamous overnight yeah. in a particular but audience it, it just did it at such pace didn't it i mean but like what's different is that the recommendation algorithms are just near perfect yeah. right like if something gets a little bit of interest what do they do show it to more people yeah. and if it gets a little bit more interest show it to more people yeah. YouTube is great. The internet is amazing. IG's been around for a while, but TikTok has figured out how to yeah, amplify. Yeah. Th- th- they really grabbed the explore exploit algorithm like to the extreme We've and turned that up to 100. We've never seen anything like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? All, I, all, every possible parameter in there. I remember when, um, when um, our former president um, decided to make TikTok's presence in America up for sale and Mr. Satya Nadella had to buy it from Microsoft, right? Oh, he just had God. to buy it. And, and Oracle um, was involved. I remember that. Oracle, too, yeah, because Oracle was going to own TikTok. <laughs> That's how that, that works. Totally, <laughs> that totally makes sense. Like, we live in a world where that was almost possible. <laughs> yeah, right? like, yeah, like, yeah. I can see Microsoft, they already own a social network called LinkedIn. Uh, fine. And, hmm. and Xbox, social network, hands down. But Oracle almost put a bid in for TikTok, right? Like, that was <laughs> the world we, we lived in. Yeah. However, one interesting thing about that is, um, they weren't going to get access to the algorithm, right? Like you can buy access to these users in America and so on and so forth, but you could not get the juice at all. And that was ah. off the table. And I thought that was really, really interesting. It told you where the value actually was, right? Their ability to push things out. If you want to be a conspiracy theorist, Ooh, I, 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 I agree with you. I think I, Should so... I get my bag? I've got a conspiracy <laughs> bag. It's right behind me. Seriously. Let's go grab it. You know, Absolutely, I want to go through does. that bag. Uh, I, if you, um, it's possible that the algorithm was not doing just serving up content as well, though, right? Mm. I feel oh, like part of the reason there. they might okay. not want to sell that algorithm was because it might have been microphones might have been on a little more than they were supposed to be on, and all. Yeah, God forbid, oh, we're going there. You know, no, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't What's know. The timestamp, Ronnie. What's the like? <laughs> This is the, this is the classic Facebook is listening to my conversations. The signals they collect will give you a lot of great like heuristics and show you the dynamics how they evolve over time. Doesn't mean they're like bugging your house. I no, I don't. The- I don't think they're. Bu- I don't think. I don't think. Uh, like I understand how 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 mobile devices work and that if I get shown, if I'm hanging out with my, my yeah. neighbor, if my neighbor orders something next yeah. door, I'm more likely to get shown that advertisement just by proximity. There's lots of ways. I understand that. But I'm not certain. Some of the I'm not, you know. Maybe uh, hey, TikTok. How do you know? Uh, you know? Yeah. Did you order this pizza? Would you like to? <laughs> <laughs> right? like, yeah. Yes, I would. But stop listening to me. <laughs> you know, uh, I just don't think we have the computing power for it. Right? right? Like, could you imagine? Like every device. All I'm not. I'm thinking it's individuals listening. I like to picture it as being a room <sighs> just full room? of people just being like. Okay. The nail, the nail var- Get him the nail varnish. He wants. Okay, this I actually guy. buy this way more. Right? <laughs> like, like, like people powered stuff. I buy it. Totally. Hundreds yeah, of thousands yeah. of people individually listening, yeah. so that you get you get curated yeah. content with like a pen and paper, just writing stuff down. Yeah. Right. Like and like yeah, rushing it to the top. We got one. This guy wants, you know, yeah, he wants he needs, more toilet paper. 
right? Because that's like, he can't find it. It's sold out everywhere. More toilet paper for this guy, right? Here. I, I think the thing that gives me peace of mind with those algorithms is when, when you go onto Amazon and you order like a leaf blower, like in Rami's background there, and you buy a leaf blower, blower and then for three weeks, all of your feed is about leaf blowers. It's like, this guy fucking loves leaf blowers. You're like, that's actually, I bought the leaf blower. Uh, oh, really? It's fine. I'm probably never going to buy one. I think you can stop selling me the leaf blowers. Like, even no. if it was leaf blower accessories, no. Well, Did you know how many leaf blowers we have on here? So that always makes... I, I, either they do that to make you feel safe or they're, you know, it's not quite there yet. <laughs> I don't know. J- John, on, on the TikTok story and on the all clones, right. I feel like uh, all of our Instagram feeds when Reels hit had a particular flavor and I feel like it said a lot about ourselves that everyone went Instagram. Tell me about your Instagram feed. No, no, no. Listen, my Reels or Explore feed says nothing about me. Are you sure? Great. Right? No sure? matter how much I try to tailor it or curate it or control it, it always returns to young women stepping all the time to some <laughs> random EDM beat, right? Like, I follow cars, I follow music, <laughs> I follow photography. Right? I like art and anime and tech and all of these things. And I tap on one dancing video and everything goes to dust. Right? Like all of it. Like uh, my, do, 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 do. My, uh, my feed doesn't stay the same for longer than 30 minutes. Right? Like, and it takes 30 minutes to get rid of all the junk. Like, yeah. Like, hat tip to anybody over there. They figured it out. And I blame my friends for this too. They can influence your explore feed. So is is really? That, yeah. How do you say that? I think so because some of their stuff shows up as well. Uh, yeah. That's because they're listening. That's though. the people in the room yeah. listening to you. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you yeah. would though. You'd use the graph. You? That makes most sense. Oh yeah, if you let's, want to bootstrap go with it. let's go. With you that. would. I just want it to be about what I want it to be, and obviously Meta has a different take on me. Maybe they know more than I do. I think it's possible. I respect that you're going with this. You're going with the calling the Meta. It's not Instagram. It's not. FB. Are we not doing this? Yet? No, no, we're good. No, no, I'm, I'm there. I can't. I, it does it. It re, I struggle with it. Really? Why, what's yeah. what's you, your the cringe factor, or just the fact that it's, it's new? Or... I don't buy it. It hasn't <laughs> changed. Like I've this got is... the Oculus headset. It's fine. I'm still using IG. WhatsApp is not Meta. It's bloody WhatsApp. It hasn't cha- like no one's. T- I mean, other than the back end and the signal, yeah, fine. But like, come on, I'm not buying the the Bree brand. Is it just met? Like, I mean, Alphabet? Do you do you see? But the Alphabet, Alphabet wasn't branding? a rebrand. Alphabet was literally a conglomerate story, and yeah, you never talked about Alphabet. Well, you this, still is, a con- this is a conglomerate. No, no, it was the same thing. Google was mm. the overarching company there. Google acquired all those companies, nice. and then they said, "Oh, by the way, Google is actually just a subsidiary of Alphabet and all these other companies." I know, as well. I know, I know. It's but, the but, exact same thing. But, it's but, identical. But Larry and Sergey didn't come out and go, "The future is about Alphabet blocks, and everyone's going to be eating Alphabet soup." And if you think about it, you're going to be A, and you'll be b and you'll be c and like it wasn't a rebrand based on the concept it wasn't selling the product in the also same had, they also had adult supervision you're probably right Ruth, maybe Ruth the was alphabet there. versus yeah. meta thing hits a little yeah. different yeah. <laughs> now yeah. but you know one of the first things you said was the metaverse is coming do you do you feel that or what, what's your stance on the metaverse john um i would argue that it's already here a lot of folks would you have your Fortnites, your robloxes you know, your Final Fantasies and your World of Warcrafts. I mean, World of Warcraft had like 13 million people playing yeah, it in a world yeah. what, one day. But here's the thing. Uh, there wasn't a platform with billions of people on it, right? Like, if you're going to go ahead and create a metaverse, maybe meta is poised to do it. I just want to understand what they're asking of us. Do you want me to, like, sign in to another world and be another persona and go to work? Or <laughs> like, <laughs> Right. We... Am I just gonna like, like do my job in VR, or do I like jack in Matrix style? Do you, do you, I would actually be up for it. But you do know. you think they're separate? So, so the the vision of and there's other metaverses we should probably call out. Like there are there are other metas the most has made the biggest splash. But there's the Nvidia Omniverse, right? There's oh, the, yeah. the there are other metaverses. Yeah. Uh, but but um, do you think it's possible to separate VR AR from the metaverse right now, or is there just too much noise? Well, it depends on, oh, I almost want to add, it depends on how much you can decentralize yourself, right? Like in another world, right? Right. Um, I Bring us there, John. To, explain yeah, that. Take us, Bring us, take there. us there, John. Yeah. <laughs> right? like, 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 <laughs> are we going to do the Web3 X meta? Like, 
I want all of it. Let's hear everything. Let oh give, give us the breakdown. Just, just mainline it, mate. Yeah, I mean, like honestly, I would I would argue it depends on what we're hoping to accomplish in this other universe. Facebook's take is quite interesting. They started with enterprise. Let's go to work here. Let's have our meeting rooms and hang out with our colleagues. And then their whole announcement, it got a lot more personal as well. Um, I think one of the more disappointing things that was called out earlier is that, um, you know, Mark Zuckerberg kind of got um, into his world and chose his exact persona, right? Like he was nobody different. I'm already living shirt. my perfect life. Yeah. Same shirt, same pants, same S all look. And I'm like, same robotic movement. Maybe, maybe that's what he's asking us to do. If I have to replicate my life in another world, I don't think I'm here for it. Right? Like, <laughs> if I can, if I can um, uh, kind of extend it and do something else, maybe it's for fun. I can see work maybe, right? We've all been working from, from home for quite some time. I would argue looking at you through a screen is kind of the metaverse right now, right? Like you're, you're just a tiny box on my monitor. Yeah, yeah, right? we're all like, just nodes at the end of a terminal. Did, yeah. did, did something change? Like Mark has been getting up on that F8 stage for however long, for like five, six years and showing us his avatar, playing ping pong, doing barbecues, having meetings in that Oculus setup for you know, like many, many years. Yeah. Did, did something change where all of a sudden, like other than I, a rebrand that's made, is I something think technically changed? What's happened? I think they're gearing up for something. I mean, look at the success of the Oculus, right? For the mm. first time in a long time, VR is not new, right? For the first time in a long time, VR is accessible. Yeah. It's performant. It's fun. My mother asked me about an Oculus Rift, right? Or Oculus what? Quest, right? Like what? what is it? Rift? Quest, 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 quest two. Yeah. John, John, yeah, like, John's the one who got me into it, and subsequently, we yeah, so we can play pong so, together. Yeah, we right. play pong. John got me into it to play, play pong, pong, and I was like, "What is this?" And so, and so, VR is now mainstream suddenly, and so, I think of these as um, seminal moments, right? We had the television, we had the personal computer, we had the cell phones, and, and it could possibly be VR next. And I think, when I think of a Facebook. If I wanted my own thing where I didn't have to compete with an Apple or a Google or an Android or an iOS, let's make it the Oculus. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. build my own universe, my own app ecosystem, and I'll bring my billions of people with me yeah. so they can all hang out. It right? already works. When I get in there in the social experience in Oculus, is already I'm connecting with people in there, like my brother and friends who yeah. I haven't touched in a long time. They're already there. And, and Apple's already come out and said, listen, our hardware is obviously going to be amazing, but we're not about the metaverse. We're still going to be a hardware play, et cetera. So let's see what that what that actually looks I mean, like. They're going they're going the AR route, right? Like, yeah. like, like keep the yeah. keep the world in view. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited yeah. about that. I think that's going to be great. Surely. I also I amazing. also read today the Oculus Quest. So there's going to be two, you know, face or meta. Pro and three. They're doing the pro line and they're going to have the three. Exactly. So just it. explain it for folks. It's going to be the, there's going to be the budget model, the $300 version, which is for the masses. And they want to be able to advance the technology, do the pro version and the best you can get from VR. And that's coming out this year as well. Right. So, but I'm here for it. I'll upgrade. I, I, I'll do I it struggle as well. from, from like an industry point of view. So I, I'm con and like a year ago, we were talking about, we should all go and work in VR. Let's do this. We're excited. And I was looking at it going, what would I actually do? Is any of my, and my conclusion was like, it, it felt like gaming. A lot of the work and a lot of the type of work is games, folks, developers, sure. product managers come across there. H how is it from a design point of view, John? Are, are the roles essentially game design roles that are ported over or are you seeing the 2D you know well, sketch artists come across into i think i think it's a matter of um what's your hook first right so the hook is obviously gaming more immersive um your friends are already there you're physically moving right you're in the game and i think the expertise that came with it was obviously game designers 3d modelers um programmers already knew what to do i think the next step there is to show that the platform can do more and that's exactly what meta aka facebook is showing us, right? Let's be in our meeting room. Let's project three massive displays where you can get, get a whole bunch of work done. Imagine never needing a laptop or a monitor. You just kind of sit in a, in a comfortable place and put your headset on and you're at work or not needing to travel. If I'm like, if I'm a betting person, no longer needing to send folks anywhere, which we're already seeing, no more conference rooms, which we'll see what happens. And just put your headset on and your entire team's there. And I think, the expertise is moving. Look how many designers on Twitter now suddenly know 3D, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, yeah. or are suddenly minting 3D NFTs. NFTs, yeah. It's 
it's shifting. And so if you have more expertise in the space, you have more creativity in the space, more options, more outcomes, and more things to do. And so I think there will shift in terms of productivity, but it needs to be more performant. Hence the pro model coming out a, I think a smaller step with the three, but that pro model should be quite performant. Yeah, and we're I all going to upgrade, let's be honest. Do you, huh? <laughs> do you, John's going to have it before it's out. <laughs> I've already where, like, where do you think the, where do you think the win is? Do you think the win is, if you look at other business models, do you think the win is to do the high end business stuff, get the, get the, get the enterprise users using the pro model, or you think it's about gaming and getting the Oculus out to everyone and, and, and their aunt, where, where's the win there? Oh boy, that's, that's kind of hard to tell, right? Like right now it's kind of grassroots if you're trying to enter or, or uh, the Slack route, right? Like get the everyday folks to kind of exist in this world first and get their employees to kind of do more. Um, I think there's a reason why there's a pro model out both on like the consumer side, always release an accessible thing and the pro thing. Um, but the win here would probably be to continue to become more mainstream. Right? Like everybody, when everybody has one, whether it's the two or the three or the pro, you're already winning. And then from there, opportunities in the lock, right? It's going to bring more developers and more designers and more creative types and product people going, hey, there are 300 million people here. We might as well build something useful yeah, yeah. and interesting. It has to be an audience, right? It's a razor blade model. You have to you have yeah. to sell it below cost like they already are. It's like all the home assistant, speaker assistant story. They were giving them out at NBA games. You I, need them in people's homes first. Yeah, then I think you've got the question is, how many people need to have a VR headset yeah. in their home in order for it to become more than it is, which is gaming and entertainment right now i wonder is there a glass hole moment for 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 vr like i'm wondering is there something that will that will make it the segue like you know google glass the glass hole google glass brought out augmented reality you know years ago 2013 or 14 or something like that little glasses you put on you could look in it it was going to change the world and then it turned out just one percenters bought it and actually there's a lot of assholes used it and people looked at it you look oh john's about to bring there we go oh oh, just i was just about to put these on oh it's awkward it's awkward put them why don't you put them on while i explain what a glass hole is (laughs) <laughs> I'm just gonna like put this away, you know. And so, so awkward, so awkward. While he's on his segue, I didn't spend fifty hundred bucks <laughs> and line up in Google's downtown office. I wanted them. Or, I'll put a photo up of me in this stream of, of me wearing them. I thought they were so so cool, and I was like, "This is definitely where the like." I still think they were amazing. Yeah, like, really, really great. They were great, but then suddenly they were just you. You couldn't have them. People were wearing them out to bars to pick people up. It was just it was, was it was. I was okay with not being cool yeah. a little for a little bit, just to have a slice of the future. Yeah, like, I was yeah. wearing a whole computer on my face. Right? Yeah, because yeah. that's what we want, right? Look. I, I think fifteen hundred bucks. I think yeah. that's what Apple's going to bring out this year. I think we're going to tick that. We're going to have glasses. We're going to tick the box finally because yeah. I want that yeah. so bad. Well, you've already got Ray Ban. You've already got Snap that did it pretty oh. well. Well, they They've were all just cam- they were cameras in a, in glasses. What I, but the camera was the most offensive part, right? So they've managed to get past that. It feels like everyone's moved on. They're like, as long as the glasses work out, we're there. We're going to have. That's it. interesting. I mean, the spectacles. Look at those. Yeah, yeah. People love them. Snap. Sorted it. Sorry, yeah. Marcus. Yeah, I think Apple's exactly going to do that, and it's going to, and they're going to market the hell out of it, and everyone's going to be on board. Is there uh, what I was getting at? Is what's the risk for VR? What could what could break? Not VR. What could break the Oculus tear? Like it's tearing through the US right now. It has, you know, they're selling it at the right price. Everyone's going to have one by the end of twenty twenty two, unless. Yeah, what's dot, the thing? Dot, dot. What's the thing? Kids. It's, I don't know. Kids. I think I think it's safe. I think it's like the Wii Fit. It's I mean, like they'd have to be radioactive at this point. I feel yeah. like, like they'd have to like stunt your growth. <laughs> it's <laughs> unstoppable. But I think I think that's what was happening. I think I started getting a whiff that there's a what's it actually doing to our kids? Like physically, is it distorting their perception of reality? What age groups are appropriate? You started getting a bit of the childhood psychologist coming out going, you can't mess with reality like that. Here's it's something. Here's something I do not worry about because I'm not invested enough to care to worry. I, I really want the metaverse to be a real thing, and I, I I'm a, I'm very bullish on it, but. I worry that it becomes the new Facebook and I'm using Facebook, not Meta, Facebook, where all your parents are on using yeah. Oculus Rift. The big blue. Like I, there's so many 40 year olds, you know, my WhatsApp group, they're all, they've all got one. Like there's so, there's, 
too many people of our generation have bought them that I wonder, is it going to have a name? Do they become the segue then? Do they? There's enough people who are not cool using it who think they're cool, and actually there's something else that we're going to have to do. That's oh, we're talking about an better. actual segue. Do they become the segue? Go yeah, on. that's what I mean. Do they become the segue where great technology, we all thought it was going to be the future, and then because a bunch of people who weren't cool bought them, they're not cool. So... You're worried they have wireless headphones again, aren't you, Marcus? We were talking last week, John, how wired is the only thing that's cool now. He's yeah. worried they're the wireless headphones. Okay. I just, I, I worry well, that we're the demographic that's like, yeah, yeah these are the next thing, they're it. cool. And it's like, wait, yeah. are, are 12 to 16 year olds really, do they really want these? Yes. Are they bullish on it? Are they, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's the one signal I have. So my nephew, 10 years old, uh, around the high school around there, this Christmas, everyone in his class had one. I got one to him like a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. And now everyone in his class have it and they're all okay. on there playing Rec Room. Okay. Horizon World and okay. doing a bit of ping pong, like across the board. Right. Okay. And if they're doing that now, I'm like, I'm, well, then I'm okay. Yeah. Then we're good. Here, what about this? Are we going to, in our in our working lifetime, are, do you reckon we're going to get uh, VR meetings where it's non-human avatars in the meeting, where I'm getting a presentation from the head of product who is uh, one of those giant row or a lizard or a slug or something, <laughs> and you're just like, you're just reviewing their content and it's like this, whatever their avatar is, is that yeah. going to happen? In the- I, I think I'd be a Gundam or like Optimus Prime. Right? Yeah. And today, and today we're going to go over this design and this experience. And let me talk to you about how. Here's our time. Really nails and, uh... our right? right, like, <laughs> and it'll just transform. <laughs> and you're like, you're like dripping, and like, yeah. Actually, uh, I'm here for it all. That sounds amazing. I don't think that's going. But do do we? I yeah. Hundred yeah, percent happens. I think so. You think so? Hundred percent. Right. This is what. I, so the premise here. Rami's always like 100%. Yeah, that's definitely, it it's, like, it's definitely not. Any money, there are startups right now that are having meaning this minute and they're all in 3D avatars that are not themselves. Robots, slugs, animals, kinky stuff, you name it. And Ooh. any money, stuff's been recorded in, in 3D and in VR and other people are watching that recording of the avatar. So I what you a, said has already happened for sure. I have a question about a concept for this show. Um, are we uh, doing predictions here? So when Rami says 100%, does it happen or not happen? So and should we so, place the time frame? So up? yes, we do. But Marcus gets to edit them out if he was wrong, <laughs> which, which I think is a little bit of a loophole. Also, what you need to realize: Rami saying one hundred percent means sixty percent. Like oh, Rami has a different scale, scale to everyone. Scale. When he, it's one hundred percent of one hundred and forty percent of base sixteen. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I cannot wait for the end of year wrap up. Where we look at every prediction that was supposed to land. We should oh, we should oh, totally good. record right. those because we, yeah, that's Love a great. Co- you, you've just defined a concept for us. Just you've defined I'm a segment. Just, I'm just here to be additive, right? Like, yeah, yeah. So to give give it to us, John. Every guest yeah. has to give us top three predictions for 2022. Any domain. You can actually buy a PS5 by the end of this year. <laughs> that, that's a that's an outrageous one. There's <laughs> right? like I know this one's going to be really big, right? Like you can buy a PS5. Or an NVIDIA graphics card sometime this year. <laughs> okay, let's do something. Let's do something uh, culturally relevant that doesn't have anything to do with gaming. Let's watch crypto for a bit. I'm I'm wondering how many folks are we left holding the bag. Like, I'm a little worried about the fact that everyone's an expert <laughs> right now, right? Like, and um, Marcus included. Um, <laughs> <I'll> take, uh, <laughs> just a little bit. Right? Like, at some point. Investing in gambling start to blur the lines. I think we're going to have a moment of recovery for a lot of folks left holding the bag after their their very Robin impulsive Hedesk. investments, <laughs> impulsive <laughs> investments, and we're going to have we're going to have a year of the oopsies, right? Like this will be the year of the oopsies. I think there's going to be a lot of folks that should have just maybe hired a broker or read some more, right? The AP is setting up an NFT marketplace. Coinbase is setting up an NFT marketplace. Yeah. Reese with a spoon, based on the last tweet, is about to join the metaverse and set up an NFT marketplace. Great. Right. Are are cool. I've been waiting for Reese. I was like, when Reese is in, I'm in. That's that. That's the indicator for me. Honestly, I think that's right. And so, allow me to readjust my question. <laughs> if she's in, yeah. I'm definitely. You're all in. You're like right? all like... the chips. <laughs> I mean, like, the Reese Witherspoon marketplace for NFTs. Can I pivot entirely? Can I pivot entirely just because we're at risk of talking about NFTs for the entire episode again? Can I just say that I think that uh, that Jeff Bezos looks amazing and that he's entire he's absolutely ripped. He's ripped have as you, a mofo. Have you? 
here's we the, all fo- saw the photos. He's ripped here's the photos. Photo. We've all seen the photo of him in the puffy jacket where he he looks ripped again. There's one that came out a couple of weeks ago of him on the back of a yacht, um, yeah. and he's abs. He looks like he's 25 years old, like Jeff Bezos, who had, you know, I don't know, our buds his whole life since the whoa, age of 15. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Since the age of 15, and he's now this. I, I mean, he's just. I question. Cold. One. Yeah, there was Cold. a question. There. One. One. Should we take growth hormone? Two. <laughs> is it safe? Yeah. I want to from a design from a design point of view, Chan. Wait. Can we let's for, let, let me frame this? Hold hold what about on. designing your there own are, body in your fifties? There's context to add here and things to establish. <laughs> do I get a yacht? And do I get to take photos like around the world, showing that I'm living my best life? Yes. If so growth hormones for everyone, right? Like, yeah. In and out. Let's go. I'm, I'm, only, I'm only making fun of it because I'm genuinely I'm jealous. It's ridiculous. How, how is Come Jeff on. Bezos an action hero now? Like, that's what not right. Mean? Okay. He's well, basic. Got, if you're worth $50 billion, you've got nothing else, literally nothing else to do than to work out 10 okay. times. Whoa, but more mean, impressive, though, more impressive is his ex-wife, right? She's just giving it all away, right? Yeah. Like, like. I'm a big fan of that. That that the what what what's it called? Where they make a pledge? What's the you know give it all away before you're dead? That Warren Buffett has done. That you, do you know the pledge they make? Oh, Growth it's called hormones. it's called the Giving Pledge. The Giving, <laughs> the giving pledge. pledge. There we go. Yeah. Boom. The Giving Pledge. I'm glad she's done that. He's not going to do it. He's building I'm a phallus, phallus rockets <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and growth hormone. Like that's expensive shit as hers. well. You know. Yeah. She's going to keep one billion for herself like, and slum it. The, and then like, you know her so. investments are mind-boggling, and she doesn't brag about it. She just does it, um, and she's changing the world for the best. I feel like we're straight off topic, lads. Ta- okay, Come design. Away. We're back to. I was Let's talking about designing something. your ideal life and body. If that's if, if that's beyond your your, okay. uh, yeah. your realm was, of expertise. I'm more than happy to field any design-related questions, design industry-related questions. From a design perspective, design perspective only. That's all I want to know. Oh, boy. First thing that comes into your head. Design Don't perspective. overthink it. Apple or Android? Consumer-friendly. Mm. Between Apple the two? Apple or Android. Oh. Android is definitely doing its thing this year, for sure. Material U. Pixel 6 Pro, totally doing its thing. Apple could use a bit more innovation right now. I'm with you, 100%. Mercedes or BMW? Uh, Beamer, all day. <laughs> is that a question? <laughs> the well, it is. He's had machine. both and he used to rip into my Beamer. And, <laughs> ah, and now he has a Beamer. And now I'm sorry, understands. the ultimate driving machine. I like mm. the other owner, you don't. Now you understand. YouTube or TikTok? Uh, YouTube. Netflix or Disney? Netflix. Solana or Luna? Luna. Oh. That's an investment advice. SF or New York? Uh, New York. Whiskey or scotch? Uh, <laughs> whiskey and scotch. <laughs> In one glass. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> Figma or sketch? Uh, Figma, but I miss sketch. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Rami or Marcus? Caro's husband or Marcus is what he meant. Uh, can I choose the leaf blower? <laughs> <laughs> Like, was that an option? It's going to get more that's subs like, than any of us. Let's that's go actually next week's guest. We just turned that on for 30 minutes. You should just have it on camera. Right? <laughs> you know where I get really excited about design? Um, how much more inclusive it's become over just the last few years. I looked at a design update to our emojis, right? Like in this particular update, um, obviously... One of the new additions for emojis, especially the people forward ones, um, is the inclusion of skin tone, right? However, the thing that hasn't changed there was the order of the skin tone, right? And so it was from standard to white to black at the end. And one of the updates that I saw randomized the order of the skin tone. That way, when it was presented to the user, it wasn't presented in ranking order, Mm -hmm. right? And I love this as an example because this shows that um, people, companies, designers, product folks, executing teams are being so much more thoughtful in regards to the experiences that we're putting out in the world. And the reason why this is really important, at least to me, is that um, when I as a user or when any user sees these things, um, they're not subliminally programmed to think about them 
in the way they were originally presented. Of course, it's in random order because there's no ranking order for these things, right? right. Like we're teaching folks to be much more thoughtful and inclusive um, just by showing them good work. <laughs> right? how, how does how does something like that come about? Who who makes a decision like that, and then how does it make it into product? Talk us through that. Yeah, I think um, I, I think what's been happening for quite some time is that I, when we're starting to to think about these experiences, these especially these massive at scale product experiences, we're thinking about who's using them, um, what feelings and ex or emotions or thoughts or outcomes we want to either help them achieve or feelings we want to invoke. Um, the people that are in the room are different. The questions we're asking a lot different. Um, the culture and the environment in which we're creating these things is a lot different. Um, and our users are no longer tolerating the status quo here, right? Like we have to all be better on both sides, right? And we also have to teach other folks to be better. And I think what happens now is that this is the criteria for launching a new product, right? Or a new experience. I love that. And I love that about the design industry, John. I think my observation of you know, like design in big tech, whether it's in Google or where I am right now, the most thoughtful kind of philosophical deep thinking that can happen is in the design departments. And you know, it's very easy to think of the design as the 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 radius, the drop shadow, the colors, whatever it is. That's like a vis vis d visual designer specific sure. sub discipline. But the core of design is everything you just described: the empathy, the feeling, the real kind of emotional connection to it. What are you conveying, and how are people using and not using your products? I mean, I I still get goosebumps, and I hear it all the time. And the thing about that is, it's a requirement. It's not optional, right? Like, we're building things for millions of people. Globally, I, 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 I think I said this, Marcus, in, in the previous chat was I would love to pivot and just design as the next career. I think it's. Would, the, you, uh, would you do that? Would you? Would, yeah, you would. Yeah, I would. I think it's would, the best. I'd, I'd be a terrible designer. You should not, you not should just visually, but like back. the whole process. Just come back. Just come back. Come back to where? The mothership. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, you've been. You're our first interview, John. You're the. I mean, how Wait, was, was it I getting interviewed? How did okay. do? How does it I feel? I think. How does it feel to be interviewed by two pros? Honestly, I thoroughly enjoyed myself. You guys are an absolute blast. I cannot wait for the for my job rec to go through. Maybe I can like sit in the back there next to that light. Right, I, as iPad. I said, but I don't want to commit to any. The, you know, the leaf blower and all that be a hassle to move it. You know, there's, yeah, there's just a lot going on. Right, so cool. it's cool. can't I'll promise just, anything. I'll just keep but... my role here. <laughs> John, on, just... on a zero to ten, would you recommend to a friend? Uh, are we doing MPS? Yeah. Okay. Um, which friend? Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> do you like him or do you not? Yeah. It's been a pleasure talking to you, John. You've been a, you've been a great guest. You've been made, you've made it really easy. We've had to do very very little, which is our business model. So appreciate you coming on and bringing bringing your A game. All right, legend, mate. This oh. is a great way to catch up. It's all been done. Thank you so much for having me. Cheers. Great seeing all you. All right. As well. Cheers. Bye. Talk to you later. Bye. Take it easy. Jeez, that guy's such a jerk. <laughs> I wasn't expecting him to be so hard to talk to. It's just rough. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, mate. Like, I think, I think, I mean, he was, he was perfect, wasn't he? He was a great guy. I mean, he literally, you know, carried on. I mean, he's on the exact same wavelength, yeah. you know?